Welcome back scholars. This video will just show you a few of the equations and a little bit of the math that could go along with colligative properties. And uh, we'll start off again with vapor pressure. And in the prior video, I, I told you that the, the vapor pressure of the solvent, and I wrote that as a P naught for the original vapor pressure, the vapor pressure of the solvent times some sort of a fraction will equal, equal the vapor pressure of the solution. And since this is really dependent upon the number of solvent particles at the surface of the solution that have been replaced by the solute, it really is just a simple fraction here, something that would be less than one. And when we think about fractions and we think about number of molecules, really what we're gonna think of here is we're gonna think about the mole fraction, but specifically it's going to be the mole fraction of the solvent. And so the mole fraction of the solvent is going to be the moles of solvent over the moles of solvent plus moles of solute. And this works especially well when you might have more than one solute dissolved in the same solution. And it depends completely on moles, so it's all in terms of the number of particles. And we also typically only think about using this um, when we look at organic solvents, although it does come into play with something like water. In fact, this is a named equation, and this is known as Raoult's Law. And it's for determining the vapor pressure of a solution. Now, conceptually, we link this to boiling point, but in terms of the equations, the boiling point and the freezing point are really more related to each other in terms of the math. And the change in the temperature, so this is the change in the boiling point or the change in the freezing point, will be equal to the molality, and again, this would be of a particular solute, so solute, molality, and recall that molality is moles solute, per kilogram solution. Molality of the solute times some sort of a constant. This is either going to be for boiling or freezing, and it's also going to depend on what your solvent is. So this will be a particular value for the boiling point of water. This constant will have a different value for the freezing point of water. This would have a very different value for the boiling point of ethanol or the freezing point of ethanol and so on and so forth. And then the final term in here is going to be an I. And the I is something called the Van Hoff factor. And for an ideal solution, This is simply equal to the number of ions or molecules formed by the substance. So earlier I mentioned that you might have two particles coming from sodium chloride, three particles coming from calcium chloride. The problem is that sometimes this does become um, less than this value, especially for more concentrated solutions. So higher M's, higher molalities, will be less than two or less than three for this Van't Hoff factor due to something called ion pairing. But this is the equation for both boiling and freezing point. Remember, freezing point 
is decreased or depressed. So delta T will be negative or should be thought of as being negative, whereas boiling point increases or is elevated. So delta T will be positive. So the freezing point for water, pure water is zero degrees Celsius, and that decreases as molality or I increase. And the boiling point for water is 100, and 100 degrees Celsius, and that will increase as molality or I increase. Finally, the math that goes into osmotic pressure. Pressure starts with a P. The Greek letter pi is a lowercase p, and the uppercase Greek letter pi is also a p. And that is, in fact, the symbol we use for osmotic pressure. So the osmotic pressure is, again, equal to this Van't Hoff factor, I, now times molarity. And then this is where it starts to get a little bit weird because here is the ideal gas constant and temperature. And depending on the units you want your um, pressure, your osmotic pressure to be in, this could be 0 0.0820 zero six liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin or or you could use the 8.3144 liters times kilopascals per mole Kelvin. So depending on what units you wanted your osmotic pressure to be in, those would be your two typical choices. Or you could convert from atmospheres to tor or millimeters of mercury by multiplying by 760. And so as promised, molality here plays a role in freezing point depression and boiling point elevation the molality times a constant that depends on either boiling or freezing and the particular solvent times this vent Hoff factor gives you the change in temperature. And molarity down here in osmotic pressure is the concentration you would look at. And that actually ties back in with the gas laws in terms of getting at the pressure that would be associated with that solution and going all the way back to gas laws again with Dalton's law, we see this concept of the mole fraction coming up again, where our mole fraction of solvent that still remains at the surface is going to de determine what the partial pressure is of that solution. So I'm not gonna ask you to do uh, any kinds of calculations with these, but I did want you to see what the equations were.